Hey everyone, welcome to the last episode of this build. There will be one more video coming out shortly that showcases everything from start to finish without any commentary. You know I've been putting a lot of material in the videos. I've been trying to cut it down as much as possible to make them as short as I can uh, while you still get the uh, full experience of what I'm building. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this series and here we're gonna see if I actually finished the guitar on time or not. So I decided to use the center point drill bit right here, which was the wrong decision. Almost right away, I tore out of the edge right there. And I can see my mistake. Yep, there it is. So I actually switched to a four snare bit. And these are very cheap four snare bits, but this actually worked way better. And I didn't get any tear out. And I think I actually went back to the other hole and drilled that a little bit deeper with that bit. But there you can see the magnets going in. And that's how we're holding the back plate on is with magnets rather than screws or anything like that. I think it looks a little bit cleaner. I think it's a pretty cool concept. Now we're covering the pickup cavities with shielding paint. This stuff is pretty expensive. Uh, some people will use tape, something like copper tape to shield the cavities. Um, I like the paint. The only trouble is you have to be careful. You can see the rags that I've got there and the tape that I have everywhere um, so that I can protect the body from paint splatters or if I go over the edge from being careless. And then I actually ran out of paint. So I switched to wiring because I had to order more. It wasn't the same paint. It, was, it wasn't it was nickel conductive paint. It was carbon conductive paint. So it actually looks different uh, when I finish painting it later. So now we're working on the wiring harness and that's what we're using for our ground wires. That is going to go from the bridge into the pickup cavities and then into the control cavity as well. Using the soldering iron to shrink the heat shrink uh, wrap right there. And this is some pretty thick wire that I'm using. Uh, actually it was left over from a ceiling fan that I had installed. The pickup ring screws were way too long with what they gave me. So what you just saw there were some extra pickup ring screws that I had um, for some EMGs and they're much shorter and they actually worked perfectly so I'm really glad that I had them. Once I got the wiring harness installed uh, started working on some of the other wires And there's the different color of shielding paint that I got. You can see the difference right there. But it all works the same. So, And here I taped it to where I thought I could get it all in one go. But at the end I failed right there. This was probably one of the scariest parts of the entire process. I forgot to drill the ferrule holes big enough and I didn't even think about it until actually that night <laughs> when I'm drilling this. And what I'm doing there is I'm actually going in reverse to try to prevent anything from tearing out. I'm using my best center point drill bits that I have and this actually worked very well. I somehow got through this without messing up and without any excessive tear out that couldn't be hidden by the ferrules themselves. It's a lot slower to drill backwards, but you're also really limiting your uh, chances of getting tear out. So. 
thankfully it worked out. This could have been really bad, especially since I was only a few days out from trying to have this entire guitar finished. Now we're sanding down the headstock, and I actually burned through the finish that I had on there. So I went back and then recoded it again. Nice thing about nighttime and having a headlamp is that you can still do stuff like wiring. Um, it's you don't. It's not like the finish, to where you have to really have good light to see what you're doing. Um, here I'm just starting to wire everything up on this little board that I've got. Ideally, you want to try to wire up as much as you can before putting it in the guitar. You have more space to work with if it's not in the control cavity. And I actually reached the point where I burned through one of the wires after I had put everything in the control cavity. I was trying to solder one of the grounding wires to the volume pot and I actually burned right through one of the wires that I had put on the pot. So I had to redo that and be extra careful not to hit anything else. One thing I don't like about these DiMarzio pickups, and this is something I've experienced with pickups I've used for my guitar, and that is they give you very tiny wires to work with, and you have to strip them all out uh, from the general wire casing, and it's just not fun. And here, I found out that I didn't give myself enough space to get the wiring harness and the pickup wires through the hole that I originally drilled. So we went back to a bigger drill bit. I was extremely careful and everything was fine. Drilled right through. We already had a good straight hole, so it, that drill bit just followed it. And we, did, we weren't really in any danger of something bad happening. But I got both wires through there and now we are drilling the holes to install the pickup rings which I also forgot to drill. I forgot to drill a lot of things and there's some candle wax so that's what I use for the screws um, you can just use whatever type of wax but it helps the screws, it helps lubricate the screws um, when you put them into the body so that's what I use and it smells nice Now we're just doing a quick sand on the back of the neck. And then I buffed it out. I think there actually I'm taping off so that I can recoat the back of the headstock. And we're just using some super glue to hold the magnets in. Now we are putting more shielding paint onto the control cavity cover. This stuff dried super fast. As I was painting it, I thought to myself that tape would be quicker. And there you can see some of the controls installed, the pickups are installed but there's still more wiring to do back there. I am not good at soldering and this was very difficult. And we're on to the next day where I'm still soldering. 
I actually had to use two different wiring diagrams because I didn't have one that had just a three-way switch and a volume. So I had to kind of figure that out. Um, like I said, it's not my strong point. Um, so hopefully it all turns out. I think this is about where I burned through that other wire and then ended up having to replace it. Now we're using a heat gun for the shrink wrap that I put on the ends for some of these wires that don't get attached to anything else. I'm making sure that I aim the heat gun up and away from the body. We do not want to ruin the finish. If you put heat on that, it's going to peel everything right off. Now I'm getting the screws for the back plate and the neck. I'm just putting them in so that they're ready to go. And now we are putting the neck on finally. I also used a little bit of wax for these screws. And there we've got the neck installed onto the body. I double checked the length of the screws there to make sure they wouldn't go through since I did the angle um, on the neck pocket. And now we're installing the bridge, starting to put the saddles on. Actually, I'm only putting one saddle on so that I could put a string on. And there I'm just checking the height and seeing how straight it is along with the All right, board. so we've got this wired up. I have a single string on here. I literally only put one tuning peg on. There's our wiring. Hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to redo the wiring and figure out what's wrong. And this is where a little bit of panic set in. Until that happened. As you can tell, it scared me a little bit. And thankfully, everything worked. Now we're putting on the rest of the saddles so that we can get ready to string up the instrument. Adjusting the height a little bit there. Putting on our volume knob, tightening that up. And you can actually hear it there, but that's the wiper on it. Um, it's not actually the knob touching the body. Almost forgot to put on the uh, strap buttons. And some finish and paint got in the uh, tuning peg holes. So just cleaning those out a little bit so I can install them. Needed to clean that one out a little more. All right, now we're just putting the screws in there. Make sure that these stay put. And I use a little bit of super glue there and some washers for the cavity plate. And while that dried, put a little F1 oil onto the fretboard. You can see the big difference it makes there with what I've done on the left and the unfinished on the right. But 
this acts as a cleaner and it hydrates the fretboard. Now that everything's dried, we can pop the back plate right in. And we can pry it out real easily. And you can see the shine, nice gloss on that. Those are the strings that we are using. I was going to use the NYXLs, and the Guitar Center nearby is, was actually closed, so I just ordered those online because they were cheap. I've never really used locking tuners before this, and uh, I learned that you're not supposed to wind them around the posts. Now we are working on setting up the guitar. Uh, that's a nut file. You just got to be real careful right there. You do not want to go too deep. So do a little bit, put the string back on, see where your height's at, and then keep going. And you can kind of see the height that we've got there. You want it as close to the fret as you can get it without getting any buzz. Now I'm working on the intonation. Basically everything was sharp, so you have to make the string um, longer essentially. But you're checking at, a, at the open fret, and then you're checking at the 12th fret to make sure they're exactly the same. And there's a look at the completed product. So I'm checking out a guitar that my good buddy Buff built, and uh, it's a build for one of our other buddies, Mr. Miles Amazo. And a couple cool things. Um, first thing that I notice is the uh, bird's eye maple fretboard is pretty cool. Always been a big fan of that. Um, the back of the neck looks like it really shines on the headstock, which is nice because uh, as a guitar player, you do check that out from time to time when you're playing so not too bad the finish is very very yellow it's a kind of a, a sports car kind of yellow which I dig gives it that like Charvel hot rod look um, yeah super simple just volume knob three-way selector two pickups <laughs> Seven string, so boom, boom, you know. strings out a little bit but yeah pretty cool